for our elderly and our disabled to take seats here. And if uh, the, us regular good folks would yield to your seats to the disabled, please go on down front and take the seats. Okay? Let me introduce this morning, uh, welcome to Northampton's commemoration of Memorial Day. Let me introduce you to Master of Ceremonies, Colonel Paulette Shank. United States Air Force Reserve Commander of the Medical Detachment at McGuire Air Force Base. Colonel Shank. given their lives. Today we remember the cost of our freedom and we ask that you would hear our prayer as we gather this morning with a sense of gratitude and humility as we remember the men and women who have died in this nation's wars and conflicts. Especially we give thanks for Master Sergeant Kenneth Elwell and Private First Class Robert Dombowski who passed from this life to life eternal, having made the ultimate sacrifice on behalf of each and every one of us. O oh God, we take their memories, we take their dreams, and we walk forward, carrying the cause of freedom high and proud, just as they did. 
We ask your blessing upon each of us this day and upon our nation. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Please, everyone, have a seat. introduce um, our Northampton chairman of the Northampton Township Board of Supervisors, Frank Rothermel. Hopefully this will work. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's ceremony and thank you for attending. I'm honored to be speaking with you today on such an important occasion. We're here today to honor the sacrifice of our fallen service members and to remember the sacrifices they and their families have made in honor of duty and country. To that end, I'd like to first acknowledge and honor two of our Northampton families here today whose loved ones gave their lives defending our country and our freedoms and were lost way too early. I'm speaking of Army Private First Class Robert Dombowski Jr. who died heroically just over five years ago defending his comrades in a firefight in Iraq. And Army Master Sergeant Ken Elwell who also made the ultimate sacrifice. Again for us, died heroically in combat in Kandahar province in Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring Freedom just over ten and a half months ago. So I want to introduce you to the families of these hometown American patriots, uh, Fran and Robert Dombowski and Mrs. Janice Elwell. If you could stand. I'd also like to acknowledge a few others in attendance today. Um, my fellow supervisors, James Cunningham, Eileen Silver, uh, George Kamalowski, uh, Dr. Kimberly Rose could, could not be in attendance today. She sends her best to the family as well. Um, we also have State Representative Scott Petrie here in the back. Thank you, Scott. The Greek philosopher Thucydides once said, the bravest are surely those who have the clearest vision of what is before them, glory and danger alike, and yet notwithstanding, go out and meet it. We're here today to honor our hometown heroes and all American patriots from the time of this nation's great founding who sacrificed their lives to defend it. We are here to honor and remember their achievements, their courage, their dedication, and to say thank you for their sacrifices. Thinking of the heroes who join us in this group today, and those who are here only in spirit, a person can't help but feel awed by the enormity of what we encounter. We stand in the midst of patriots and the family and friends of those who have so nobly served. The service members we honor today came from all walks of life, but shared several fundamental qualities. They possess courage, pride, determination, selflessness, dedication to duty, and integrity. All of the qualities needed to serve a cause larger than oneself. The men and women we come to honor today didn't go to war because they loved fighting. They were called to be part of something bigger than themselves. They rose to their nation's call because they wanted to protect the nation which had given them, us, and our families so much. Millions of these Americans have answered the call, fought and died on battlefields here and abroad to defend our freedoms and our way of life. Today our troops continue to make the ultimate sacrifices 
And even as we lose troops, more Americans step forward to say, I'm ready to serve. They follow in the footsteps of generations of our nation's most patriotic Americans. We have awarded medals to many soldiers, added their names to monuments, named buildings for them, to honor them for their bravery. But nothing, nothing can ever replace the hole left behind by a fallen service member. And no number of medals and ribbons can comfort the ones left behind. But it is our duty to the fallen and their families to honor them today, this Memorial Day, and every day. It is right to honor their sacrifice where loved ones gave the last full measure of devotion to protect us and preserve our nation and our precious freedoms. So thank you for attending today. God bless you and your families. God bless our troops and God bless America. And now I wanted to introduce uh, Pete Palestino, if he could come forward. <laughs> everyone. At this time we're going to welcome home and recognize one of our Northampton Patriots. With Navy Corpsman Alexander Kozak. Please come up here and join me. As many of you know, nine years ago on April 23, 2003, Northampton launched the Patriots Flag Program to honor our Northampton residents serving in Operation Iraqi Freedom. Back then, we knew of 24 such residents, and as of today, due to uh, the expansion of the program to include Afghanistan and other hostile areas, we know of 72. In the Township Administration Building, there is a flag display holding both military and American flags. 73 of them. At one time, all were military flags, each representing the branch of service and identifying the resident with a yellow streamer with his or her name affixed to it. As each one returns home, and so far 67 have, we return his or her, her military flag and replace it with an American flag. As of this moment, there will be 73 total flags with six of them armed service flags that will be awaiting return to their representatives, four Marines and two Army. Navy Corpsman Alexander Kozak recently returned from his deployment in Afghanistan where he served as a hospital corpsman with the 37 Marines. Back on October 26, this Navy flag was placed in the display by his mom and dad, Harriet and Alan Kozak. And it's while he was deployed and now where it was to stay until his safe return, which has taken place. The American flag with Alex's name on it has now been placed in our display. And now at this time, I'd like to present his flag to Corman Kozak. Alex, please accept this flag and welcome home, brother. <laughs> Our Congressman Mike Fitzpatrick could not be with us today as there are several events going on. But he had a flag that was flown over the Capitol in Washington, D.C. for us to present to Corman Kozak, along with a certificate of, of authenticity. And so at this time, I'd like to present this to you on behalf of the congressman.
Finally, our state representative, Scott Petrie, would like to present you with a special citation. Scott? Thank you, Pete. And uh, thank all of you for coming out today on this uh, occasion. Corman, I'd like to present to you a certificate from the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. And you may be standing here wondering, why all these accolades? Why you? Why did you return? And why not someone else? Well, I think the answer to that is so that you can tell their stories. And the reason we're all here and the reason that we're making such a fuss about your return is because we have a loving community that welcomes you back into our community. And so I'm just going to read a little bit of this. For your devotion to our country and for your patriotic service at a time of great need, your dedication to the goal of keeping America free, has served to earn you the title of Northampton Patriot. You are truly appreciated by the entire community. In this world of ordinary people, you are simply extraordinary. Let me say to all of us that our great challenge today is not just what we do for our fallen soldiers and those who have died, but what we do for those that are living, whether old or young like yourself. And uh, I want to uh, give a special shout out to the Warriors Watch who gets that idea of trying to take care of our living soldiers. service for taking good care of our Marines, for being a resident of Northampton Township, and God bless you and all of our troops. Hoorah! our Gold Star family members to come up to the podium for the wreath laying ceremony. We have the Dembowski family and Sergeant Elwell's family members. is what it's all about today, Memorial Day. We take the time now from our picnics, from our time with our families, to remember those that have not come back home with us. Those of us that wear the uniform miss every last one of them, those from this conflict and all our previous conflicts. Thank you so very, very much for the privilege of allowing us to share this remembrance today. Sergeant Elwell is our newest loss in this community. So I'd like to ask the family member if you'd like to come up and just to share a little bit about Sergeant Elwell with us. Sergeant Elwell, 
This is Sergeant Elwell's brother. Hello. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. And I'd like to say a couple words about my brother. My brother was a great father, a great husband, and I'm kind of lost for words because it's been a long weekend. And I'd like to thank all the servicemen and women for everything that they do. And thank everybody. The rest of the Elwell family sits to on my right. We have brothers, we have sisters. We have the newest godchild, who is um, Sergeant Elwell. He became a godfather after his passing. And this little goddaughter is seven months old, five months old. We'll never let her forget him. Never. We have a guest speaker here today by the name of Wayne Lutz. He goes by Rock. Wayne Lutz, I'd like to introduce to you, is the founder of the Warriors Watch. He served in the Army for nine years from 1972 to 1980. This man is an extraordinary individual who I personally have had the experience of witnessing on the arrival of some of the folks that I know who have come home from Vietnam. Not from Vietnam, I apologize from our last conflict from both Afghanistan and from Iraqi freedom. He's developed a coalition of motorcyclists, riders, who, whether they served or be in the service or not served in the service, come out from home to welcome our troops home. I often think to myself, when I came home from Desert Storm, I had walked a parade and I remember it was the July 4th parade and they said, would you mind walking in Philadelphia? And I walked in the July 4th parade along with some Vietnam veterans. Very few Vietnam veterans, unfortunately. Very, very few. But when I walked that parade, I walked side by side with my veterans of Vietnam. And I'll share with you that they gave me a flag that day. And they said to me that I task you with never forgetting a soldier when they come home never allow it to ever occur again. I was tasked with that over 20 years ago. So we share our moment today in Memorial Day and remember our fallen. And I'm going to introduce right now Mr. Lux, who will never let our veterans be forgotten. Send, um, when I send an email, I have a signature at the bottom of the email that says, in part, my freedom was purchased by the blood and sacrifice of heroes and passed down to me as a sacred trust. The ongoing defense of that freedom is my solemn duty. We're gathered here today to remember the sacrifice of many generations of young Americans. As represented in this place by PFC Bobby Dombowski, who gave his life in the cause of freedom in Iraq on May 24th, 2007. And we're here to renew our commitment to preserve that freedom, to defend that freedom, and to live our lives in a manner so as to make us worthy of that sacrifice. The freedoms that we Americans enjoy comes at a terrible price. The American Revolution secured the freedom of this young nation, and since that time we have learned that in order to keep it, we must continue to defend it. 
so long as some men live in freedom, other men will strive to deprive us of that freedom. I believe that that is the very essence of the struggle between good and evil. In 1825, Daniel Webster was a member of the House of Representatives from Massachusetts, and he spoke at the dedication of a monument to the Battle of Bunker Hill. The ground upon which that monument stands and the ground upon which we stand here today are equally sacred and equally hollow and for very much the same reasons. Webster knew that this new experiment in self-government that was born in the fires of violent revolution was the last best hope for the freedom of mankind. He knew that if our young republic should fail, there was no second chance or second choice. In his words, if the representative system ultimately fails, popular governments must be pronounced impossible. The last hopes of mankind rest with us. I'll get it. Today, America remains the last place on men like Bobby Dembowski and all of those noble young men and women, those families who have sacrificed and suffered so much, makes all the more urgent our duty to preserve and defend that which they have purchased at such a terrible price. Today is Memorial Day. It's a day that we set aside to consider the high cost of freedom. We must never forget that freedom can be lost through military conquest if we allow our military to grow weak. We must never forget that freedom can be lost to encroaching totalitarian governments if we allow ourselves to grow politically apathetic. We must never forget that a chain forged link by link while our attention is diverted is just as heavy as a chain forged by sudden military conquest. Above all, we must never forget that it is our duty our solemn duty, not his, not hers, not some guy over there, but yours and mine, to preserve our Republican form of self-government and to defend it against those who would deprive us of it. Preserve and defend. BFC Bobby Dombowski understood his duty when he was only 18 years old. The challenge that I leave you with today is that each of us remains worthy of Bobby's sacrifice, not just on Memorial Day, but for all of our days, for the rest of our lives. Thank you very much. benediction. I'd like to take a moment to have everybody please stand. I pledge together we will say the Pledge of Allegiance as heartfelt as those words truly are.
I'm a remiss for not saying the Pledge of Allegiance at the very beginning of the ceremony. But it's interesting how at this point in the ceremony it is, becomes even more symbolic as each of us takes the pledge. So I wonder sometimes why there is some serendipity that occurs in that program and we forget or we overlook. And then I realize we didn't overlook. This was the perfect moment to make that pledge as we made it together today. In closing remarks, I'd like to have the benediction read by Reverend Boidi again. I'd just like to let you know that the name of the person who just did the Pledge of Allegiance for us is Ryan Burke. to leave you with this one thought. There is no greater love than this, to lay down one's life for his or her friends. Today we've gathered to give respect and honor to the men and women of our armed forces who laid down their lives for us and for our children and for our children's children. Let us resolve today that their deaths will have meaning because we will continue to work toward peace and justice that they held so dear in their hearts. May God protect those soldiers who now stand in harm's way, and may God bless this country in his love, and may he grant us peace. Amen. We have a moment of silence for military honors.
This is a conclusion to our Memorial Day services, but it would be wrong of us to close this ceremony today without a special thank you to a few folks that have come out here today. Earl's Cleaners is one of our local businesses here, and he has sponsored our sound system. So Earl, if anybody can be out there to help them out in our businesses, Neil Cohen is the production company, and Mr. Carney is our bagpipes. All of those I appreciate so much that are here. <laughs> I guess I'm not forgotten. A couple of the other folks in the back that we didn't recognize, but you need to realize have taken a special time out today to be here. I know the folks from the 82nd Airborne Division. Thank you. With that, this is the closing of our Memorial Day services. The only thing I can say to all of you is thank you so very much for taking this time out today and remembering. To our Elwell family, Sergeant Elwell, thank you for coming out. You're in my heart. And the Dombowski family as well. Thank you.